Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a free Minecraft server and by free I mean completely free. It's not some kind of free trial or stripped down version of a server on a paid host. It's a small one, relatively small, but it's completely free. To put this thing into perspective, this server would be worth $10 a month on MC Pro hosting. It's got 1 GB of RAM, no restrictions for plugins or play accounts. And yeah, it's a full blown server. One thing to keep in mind is that the IP will change every time you update the server or if it crashes down completely for some reason. So you'll have to set up a website where you'll always get the latest IP of the server. Also the IP is randomly generated, you'd have to pay 5 bucks a month for it to stay like it is. But I'm currently working on a workaround for this so stay tuned for that one. And without further ado, let's get started. Gosh, that was stupid. So to begin with, you need three accounts on those three sites. One of them is Red Hat OpenShift. They are going to be the provider where the physical computer sits, which the server runs on. Then next we need a Dropbox account to save our data and where it saves and plugins. And the last thing we need is an Ngrok account. We'll get to why we need that later. But that's all for the accounts. Then go to the Jenkins site in the description and click on paperclip and whatever number comes after that. Next thing you need is a zip file. It contains three startup files I made. I'll link it in the description below. Just download it and extract it into a new folder. Now put that file in the same folder like your three startup files and rename it to spigot.jar. Now after that, if you're on Windows, just double click the bat file to start a local instance of the server. And if you're on Linux, go to the properties of the sh file, click the checkbox for executable, do right click, open in terminal and then type in dot slash start dot sh. You can use tab completion if you want. Now on both of the operating systems you should now have a terminal window running a local instance of the server. You can now open Minecraft and go to the server local host and then you'll be on the server that we are going to get up and running on OpenShift. Right now it runs on your computer which means that your PC must be turned on in order to use the server and nobody from outside is able to join your server. So after the server has loaded up, just type stop in the console and it should quit. Inside the folder with the three startup files and the jar file should now be a lot of other folders. There you can put your preferences and plugins, install whatever plugin you'd like or change whatever preference you'd like and then come back to this video. So if you've done that, install the Dropbox client on your computer. I'll link it in the description. Then install and start the program, sign in with your Dropbox account and then go into your local Dropbox folder. Then take the folder your server is in, rename it to Spigot and move it into the Dropbox. Both the naming and the location is important for this to work. Just let it finish uploading in the background and meanwhile go to the Dropbox app console linked in the description and click on create new app. Choose Dropbox API, then full Dropbox Give it any name you'd like and click on create app. Now click on enable additional users and click OK. Click generate access token and take note of the string it's going to output. I'm just going to paste it here and we are ready for the next step. Go to ngrok.io and log in with your account. Then go to connect your account and copy the random string after the auth token and take note of that one. Next thing you're gonna need is a username and password for iax.io. 
There's no need to register, just keep your username and password in mind and try to choose one that you'll think is not already in use. The username doesn't really matter apart from that. And then you're done with the password stuff. Then go to OpenShift and sign in with your account. Register for the free plan if you haven't already. And then click Open Web Console. Wait a second for it to load. And then click on New Project. Give it a name that you think is not already taken. And give it any description you want. Wait a second for it to show up and then click on it. Then click on Deploy Image, select Image Name and type in paperbenny slash spigot openshift. It's important for this to be spelled right. Then click on the little search icon and click on Environment Variables. And now we're going to give OpenShift the passwords it needs in order to access our accounts. First type in in capital letters Dropbox token, don't spell this wrong, and paste the Dropbox token we noted from the Dropbox app console as the value. Then add another value, take ngrok token in capital letters as the name and paste our ngrok token we had from before. Do the same thing with IX name in capital letters and type in your username you're going to take. Then IX password and then the password you're going to need or to have. And then we're done with that. Just click deploy. Then click close, go into applications, deployments and click on your deployment. Click on actions and pause rollouts. Click on actions again and choose edit and set the deployment strategy to recreate. Then save it. Click on actions again and click edit resource limits. Set megabyte to gigabyte and type in one. Then save it. After that, click on Actions and then Resume Rollouts. Now, after you've waited until the deployment has finished, go into Applications and then Pods. There you'll have one pod, which is your server. Click on it and click on Log. If you've typed every password and etc. incorrectly, there should be an output similar to what you had when you ran the server locally. Except for one difference, there's going to be a blue link somewhere in there. Click on the link and it's going to take you to a site with the server IP. Before you jump on that, take note of the string after the slash, we are going to need it later. Then go back into OpenShift, click on Applications, Deployments. Click on your deployment, click Environment, add another value and type in, in capital letters IXID and then as a value paste the string we had from the link. Then click on save and wait until the new deployment is finished. And that's basically it. Every time you update the server, the new IP will be on the site we just noted. And if you want to, you can make a better website which links to the IP site. But that's your Spigot server up and running. I tried to make this tutorial short because not everybody wants to learn Docker and Bash. But if you want to be able to see what we've just done here without just following orders and be able to modify and customize it to your own needs, I can make an extended tutorial on that. Just write it in the comments below. And I'll catch you guys next time. See ya. Bye bye.